Hello, this is Brett Lonsdale from Lightning Tools, and I'm going to show you how the new Lightning Conductor client-side web part can be used to aggregate content from associated sites back up to a hub site. So SharePoint hub sites can aggregate news and also events up to the hub site, but what about all of the other lists and libraries? Well, what you can see here is I've got two associated sites. One is called Sales and the other one is called Marketing, and inside each of those, you'll notice that I've got a task list so there's a task list here inside the uh, SPFX webinar sales and across here I've also got another task list which is in SPFX webinar marketing. So we're going to aggregate both of those lists into one view. So how can we do that? Well first of all what we can do is edit the page. So we'll go through and edit the page inside my hub site. And I'm just going to make some room by removing the news web part and maybe the activity and what we can do is just simply go through and add the Lightning Conductor. So in the list of web parts, you'll notice that you've uh, got the Lightning Conductor, which can just be added onto the page here. And then we can click onto the Configure button. So as we click onto Configure, we've got two different modes of performing a aggregation. One is just a simple, uh, quick configuration, and then we've also got the advanced mode where you're in full control of everything that's going on. So what I want to do first of all is just show you the quick and easy configuration and we want to aggregate those task lists. So where it says what list data do you want to view, I'm going to select tasks and it says how do I want to refine it. So we have all tasks or my tasks or overdue tasks which are some common scenarios that we've seen with our customers over the years. So in this example I'm going to choose all tasks and then it asks where this data should come from. So I can select from the current site. Uh, this site and also any subsites if we're still working with site collections. Uh, the current site collection, again if we're still working with site collections, the current site and associated sites, which is what we're going to do, or I can also go across the entire tenant, which is using the object model and rest, or I can use the search engine as well to aggregate that content from the current site or also from the tenant. So I'm going to select this option, which is the current site and associated sites. And the final choice is how do we want to display that content? So I can either use a grid view or we can use a calendar view. So I'm going to use the grid view initially and we'll hit save. And there we have those sales tasks and we've also got the marketing tasks coming from those two hub sites with a little bit of conditional formatting going on. And I'm going to show you how you can add a little bit more conditional formatting to this. So first of all, what I want to do is perhaps show some data bars uh, for the percentage complete column. So what I'm going to do here is click onto the downward arrow for percentage complete, go to column settings, and then across to formatting. And under formatting, I want to use the data bars. So we'll uh, select the data bar option. And I'm going to set the maximum value to one, since this is a decimal uh, for the percentage complete. And that gives me my, my bar. I'm going to hide the value. I don't actually necessarily need to see the value on the data bar as well. We can adjust the height of that data bar so we can have it uh, fairly slim or uh, yeah, I'll set the point to, uh, to 21. And we can also change the color as well. Um, the, the color defaults to the theme color. So you'll notice that this will retain the blue which is currently being used uh, on the site uh, for the look and feel. But if you change your look and feel then that will adjust the color as well. Or you can also override that color with your own. So we'll select save and uh, we can just hit save again and you'll notice here we've now got the data bars appearing inside my lightning conductor. So the other formatting I want to do is on the priority column. So we're going to hit the drop down again and go down to column settings and then down to formatting. And this time I'm going to select an icon and I'm going to, I've got uh, over 3,600 icons to select which we can search for. Um, but I'm just going to go from the front page here and choose the uh, the up arrow and we can again set the color for that up arrow. We can set the size, we can choose whether we want the icon um, as well as the, uh, the, the underlying value and the position of where we want that icon to go. So uh, I'm just going to choose the, uh, the up arrow and leave all the settings alone and uh, in here we'll set that as uh, the priority is equal to high. And so what you should see inside the web part now is we've got that upward facing arrow for those high priority tasks. And of course we could do the same for the normal priority and the low priority as well. 
Um, the other conditional formatting that we might want to do is uh, a little bit on the task status. So if there's anything that is a completed task, then we could go through and uh, apply some conditional formatting to that, um, whether it's to the entire row uh, or just to the cell. Um, so the uh, the color I want to change is actually the, the background color. And what we'll do is we'll try and choose a nice shade of green, which is often difficult. Um, and uh, we'll set that and put the uh, task status equal to completed. So any completed tasks will have that gray or green shaded area in the background. Okay, so that's working with the grid view and the, the conditional formatting. Um, other things that you would expect to see is sorting. We've also got filters and advanced filters, which allow us to filter across columns, uh, as well as the ability to show and hide uh, other columns coming from those lists. Um, or moving the columns to the left or, or to the right. So the other thing I'm going to do here is build another view. And that's a, a nice thing about the Lightning Editor is you can have multiple views inside the same instance of the web part. So here I'm going to add another view. This one is currently called default, which we could uh, change the name of that to something a little bit more descriptive. So we'll call this the all tasks view. And I could simply clone this one if I want to. So if we want to have something that's just slightly different, I can uh, I can clone it. Um, so you just choose clone view, or I can add a new one. So I'm going to add a new view, and this one will name calendar. And uh, this is not going to be work working with events lists. It can work with events lists, but uh, I'm going to point it to uh, to my task list. We'll click onto the uh, configure view option. And in here, once again, I'm going to tell it to aggregate some tasks. We want it to aggregate all tasks so again uh, from the current site and the associated sites, so the hub site and associated sites, and we'll display the results in a calendar. Uh, so I'll select that and choose save. And that's created that view for me. Um, so let's publish the page. So there's our, our published page. And uh, here we've got the all tasks view. And I've also got the calendar view that I can select and see my tasks inside the calendar of which we're offering a, a day, week and month view. OK, so that's using the Lightning Conductor to aggregate tasks. Um, let's take a quick look at aggregating documents. So um, once again, I'm going to click edit. And just to show you inside the sales site here. We have some documents, so uh, so you'll see those on the web part. Um, so sales invoices, sales presentation, um, some sales commissions, and so on. And what we also have in the marketing site is a number of different marketing-related uh, documents. So as uh, so we're in here, we can see some product cheat sheets and a sales presentation and a marketing budget. Uh, so what I want to do here is uh, is obviously aggregate that, that content. So let's go back to the hub site. And again, I could uh, simply add another view. I don't need to add another instance of the web part. So we can save some space um, of your page here uh, by, by creating a new view. So we'll click on to uh, edit web part and uh, we'll click on to the add to add a new view and we'll call this documents. So, uh, so we've got the uh, the documents view being created. We can click onto the cog icon here. And again, I'm gonna use the, uh, the, the quick configuration. So I want to aggregate documents. I want to aggregate all documents uh, from the current site and associated sites. And we can choose again, how do we want to display that? So do we want a grid view or do we also want tiles? So we'll have a quick look at both of those options. Uh, so we have the uh, the grid view. Uh, so as we now open up the uh, the documents view, there's all of my uh, my documents aggregated from those two document libraries, and you can see the uh, the relevant document icons and everything are being displayed. And again, we can do conditional formatting if we want to. And let's also add a document tiles view. So from documents, all documents current site and associated sites and we'll select the tiles and let's hit save and uh, we'll have a look at that new tiles view here with inside the calendar with inside the web part and uh, here you can see uh, we've also got the preview of those documents displaying 
uh, inside the view so we can see what's inside the uh, sales presentations inside the sales invoices and inside the uh, the marketing budget um, spreadsheets so that completes the uh, the demonstration of the, the, the quick view and what we'll do in a later video is have a look at the advanced view and how we can go through and configure the options there many thanks